to Lisa Shufro. She is an internationally sought after storyteller, conference curator, and founding managing editor and producer of TED Med, who also served as co-host for TED Med's global broadcast from the Opera House of the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. The fresh, innovative talks she produced have generated tens of millions of views on TED.com and other platforms. After TED Med, Lisa moved to Las Vegas at the invitation of Zappos CEO, Tony Shi, who personally gave her the job title of Magical Awesomeness Catalyst of Downtown Project, appointed curator for Inspire Theater and the Life is Beautiful Festival, she brought communities together through original programs that featured thought leaders and performers, such as Penn and Teller, Pussy Riot, and Cirque du Soleil. Lisa is recognized as a savvy, genuinely insightful dot connector. And today, she serves as chief storyteller and executive editor at whatmatters.com where she leads the brand's media and operations team for its co-founders, the legendary venture capitalist, John Dewar, and Ryan Pachatram, former deputy chief technology officer of the United States. Lisa, welcome. Thank you so much. And I'm really grateful to be here. Measuring and purpose are very uh, common words that we use at Measure What Matters. So thanks for having me. Excellent. Lisa, tell us what what brings you to this work right now? Well, thanks for um, for letting the audience in on my background uh, there. Um, not very many people know this, but when TED first launched in the 80s, back in the 80s, um, every couple of years, the program was wholly devoted to breakthroughs in health and medicine. And eventually, it, they called it TED Med, and eventually TED Med became its own conference. And I became the head of their programming, selecting the speakers, working with them to highlight what was really exciting about the future of health and medicine. And I've gone on for the past 10 years to help a lot of different conferences uh, work through the same process and, and show uh, breakthrough thinking in their own fields. The first rule of curating uh, great speakers is to figure out who's both significant and successful. And so after doing thousands of interviews, um, some certain patterns uh, kind of emerge, one of which, you know, I think John spoke to beautifully about, around not only purpose, but shared purpose that these successful leaders often are have that and also are able to inspire it in their teams because success is just not a solo sport. Uh, and a third is the goals, the, the right goals um, that de demonstrate real progress. So um, in addition to working with leaders and organizations all over the world to tell 18 minute stories on a red dot or similar, um, I now work uh, with this wonderful organization, uh, the What Matters team, to share stories about leadership and success and goals. Excellent. So tell us, what is um, Measure What Matters? Like, what what is the idea behind this? Well, we're a community okay. first. And we are a community that exists to educate, inspire, and help leaders uh, achieve their most audacious goals. The origins of whatmatters.com are in the book, Measure What Matters, which um, was written by, as you mentioned, the legendary venture capitalist, John Doerr, who uh, has been a leading investor in most of the Silicon Valley big tech companies that, that we're all familiar with today. Um, and he is also the chairman of Kleiner Perkins. So he wrote this book, Measure What Matters, because his legacy in part is to inspire more leadership everywhere and the opportunities that come along with that. So he wrote this book, Measure What Matters. It's a collection of stories about how a particular goal setting method that was gifted to him by Andy Grove, the uh, legendary CEO of Intel, um, called Objectives and Key Results. He shares these remarkable stories of organizations you've heard of, organizations maybe you haven't heard of yet, uh, and how OKRs, Objectives and Key Results, help leaders achieve 10 times the success you would expect them. Uh, he makes sure that uh, teams and their leaders are setting the right goals for the right reasons. Can you give us an example of how OKRs are used to magnify purpose in companies? Sure, sure. So um, 
you know, I think our website is a continuation of the stories that are in the book and um, and the very first story being uh, Intel, which at the time was a tiny little company that was about to be crushed by Motorola. And so Andy Grove said, there's a hundred thousand people who need to drop everything that they're doing and become the world's best manufacturer of uh, microchips and be number one in the sales. So everything for a number of months to avoid this uh, existential crisis became, we have to be able to prove that our microchip is the best and we have to win the most sales and we have to actually make it work. And so on a dime, the company overnight, you know, went from being this fledgling little startup to sort of the the giant that, that it is today. And the book kind of details this legacy from Andy Grove and shows how this ability to articulate goals very cleanly um, and set benchmarks for progress that we all agree to and we all agree to have the right of way uh, enable companies to achieve their most audacious goals. The site has a lot of them, um, but I think for the purposes of this conference and inspiring a greater alignment mm -hmm. between doing social good uh, and what might be considered the core of a company's business, um, one really great example we have on the site is Allbirds. We have a lot, of, a lot of tools on the site, but I think at the root of it, you really have to talk about setting a clear objective. Um, you have to agree, what are the, th the things that are the, the highest priorities? And not everything we're doing, but the three things we're focused on right now. What are the biggest leverage points that will enable us to break our mission down into mini missions and allow us to measure whether we're actually accomplishing that? Because it's so prevalent to talk about the activities we're doing and instead of the outcomes. So do we agree collectively on what 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 success looks like? Are we are we bought into the same future? Um, and are our goals shared? Because you can't keep your goals in the silo. I know so many departments that feel like their goals, whether it's sales or sustainability, you know, it kind of exists in it. So, what is the process? What is the protocol you have for setting shared goals? and agreeing where the finish line in is. Is it near, is it midterm, is it far? Um, and, and, and creating a regular dialogue around that. For all birds, their mission, you know, their why, uh, their purpose is better products through better design. Can consumers love a product um, that's also good for the planet? And so they're an easy example to talk about at first in terms of how OKRs work um, because their profit and their purpose are the same thing. Um, so the first, uh, and I think Carlos, you have access to uh, the website where we show the story and some examples that are even embedded in the story. So feel free to share that at any point, um, but I'll break it down for you in, in kind of a quick way, uh, a lofty mission into to mini missions. So we have our objective and for all birds, um, doing better products through better design means first producing shoes with the lowest carbon footprint. Now they don't, when they started, they didn't do that, but they knew that all of their efforts had to be aligned with shoes with the lowest carbon footprint. Then they upped the ante and said, we, we will be achieving our goal if we get to carbon neutral. Today they do that through carbon offsets based on actually knowing, you know, down to the supply chain, every, every link in the supply chain, how much carbon footprint is expended for each shoe. And then once they achieve carbon neutral, not through carbon offsets, but through the materials that they actually develop, they're gonna raise the bar again, carbon negative products, so that when you go jogging, you're actually doing good for the earth um, and any other products that they, they might um, develop. So it's still lofty, but you can see immediately that a clear objective you know, tells you where the North Star is, everyone in the organization, their work aligns with those objectives and they set their own objectives and measurable results based on that high level objective. So they want new eco-friendly materials. Their marketing must support that message so that they can align with their consumers' values, right? They have to prove to their consumers that they are achieving those steps and how far they're getting and what the journey is along the way. They examine their supply chain, even down to their finance and invoicing processes, like what kind of cash flow do we need in order to fund the kind of R&D we need to in order to make these gigantic leaps. So that's what I would call the what, the objectives. That's the what they're doing in order to achieve their big mission and, and achieve their purpose as a company and, you know, their what, um, 
I think it's, they're, they're a unicorn. So they're five or six years old and they're already a unicorn and internationally distributing their product. Then the, what goes along with the objectives, because it's not enough just to say, this is what we got to do. How will we know we're making progress? The measuring part. Um, so that's what we call key results. And so based on what we want to do, which is lower our carbon footprint by X amount this year, um, they'll set a key result that they can definitively say indicates a significant kind of progress, accurately measure the carbon footprint, replace carbon offsets by X amount each year uh, with, with eco-friendly materials. How many new materials make it out of our R&D lab each year? And one that I think is super interesting is uh, their sweet foam example. So they did create um, a sole, which is uh, not made out of wool, uh, they also have one that's made out of, of trees at this point, but sweet foam um, is kind of a sugar-based sole that they use their, for their flip-flop line. And the material meets all the criteria, but they want it to be produced more cheaply. So they actually ended up partnering with Adidas, a sneaker competitor, because knowing that using this material, open sourcing this material, means they could get it down to scale faster or get get enough materials so that the cost would drop down significantly. And this is the kind of very innovative move that you can make that is almost counterintuitive to a traditional business model because they're so clear on their purpose and they're so clear about how they're going to measure whether they're getting there. So um, we have examples in healthcare, in SaaS, of all kinds, city governments, media companies. I mean, Netflix uses them, Snapchat uses them, Mozilla uses them, LinkedIn uses them. Um, but it's it's always about how do you bridge this gap um, between what is considered your core business proposition and the real purpose of your company. And, and I might add that also social good companies and um, organizations and nonprofits and, yeah. Um, if, if you saw that screen and you didn't know exactly what you were seeing, it's gold. And so um, that a link to these resources that Lisa's talking about is in the reception area under resources um, and whatmatters.com is a wealth of, of all kinds of information. And you can see it's some of the most innovative, um, interesting companies and organizations out there. Um, they're very simple and clear objectives and key results. Um, so really something to, to look at there. You know, there is no company at this point that can't have a dialogue uh, or can, can afford to avoid a dialogue about how their business is affecting a, a much broader and more complex ecosystem. And so I think for those who feel siloed that doing good um, and doing something purposeful and 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 beneficial on a larger scale, like the Ben and Jerry's example and the seventh generation example and, and some of the others that Dr. Izzo um, produced, right? The key is how can you articulate a goal that enhances rather than sort of adds on to the work of the business already? And hopefully the the stories that we have, on whatmatters.com, not only you know show you some organizations that are doing that beautifully, but will give you um, you know examples of things that you can measure that may help you feel like there is no longer a separation between what you do and what your company does. Exactly. So, so in the book, Lisa, um, Measure What Matters, it talks about Google founder Larry Page advocating for a quote, healthy disregard for the impossible, <laughs> which I love. Um, how do you cultivate this kind of culture and how do great teams achieve audacious goals? Wow, I love that question and it's so much um, at the heart of the spirit of, of, of measuring measure what matters and, and the work that John and Ryan have done to bring OKRs to the, uh, to the world at large. So I think, um, it's really important to remember that this is a skill that we probably all had as kids, right? You grow up and you don't, you, you dream of going to the Olympics or you dream of being the best at whatever it is you're interested in. And that might change over time, but you know, we're encouraged to dream big when we're little. And I don't know when that gets taught out of us, um, but this is sort of a protocol that makes it safe to think like that again. Um, there is um, someone, 
on a team that I coach, uh, it's a media company that I can't uh, divulge the details of, but uh, within their ranks is a former Olympian. And um, I asked him, he was like, well, what do you do when you have an audacious goal and people are afraid they won't make it? And we have some stories of, about this um, on, on the website as well. But his response was, you know, as an Olympian, um, I understood that I had to have a plan for how I was going to get there. I might not get there, only a small percentage of people get there. But in thinking big and refusing to think small, I always had to have a plan. And if I failed on one given day, right, I always knew how I could adjust to get there. And that's kind of the gift of setting an audacious goal is it forces you to rethink the inputs and it, it encourages you to track and say, have I really got the three or four big leverage points? Don't go to a meeting and track all the activities that were done and all the next steps you're going to take. You got to track, wow, are we 25% of the way there? Um, is that where we expect to be or are we behind? Because if we're behind, what can we adjust? What are we focused on? What additional help do we need to bring in so that we all cross the line together? So. OKRs aren't a silver bullet. They're not going to fix a broken culture or a culture that's really out of integrity with its stated purpose. Um, but when they are used well, uh, they they take teams further than ever. And the book is filled with examples of that from the Gates Foundation and Bono's One Organization to Google and Intuit. Um, and, and again, we have you know more than 50 stories uh, up on the website at this point that we think are good examples of organizations being willing to think about the problems in a daring way and to fail with integrity, right? To fail in a way that sets them up to adapt better, but they don't, they don't lower the ceiling. Excellent. And, and what recommendation do you have for our attendees today? What, what action can they take to accelerate their purpose-driven projects? Well, definitely don't settle for business as usual. <laughs> uh, OKRs and the language you use, whether you use OKRs at your organization or not, the language you use about what matters, matters. And so don't shirk on coming up with a way of describing what's important, that's inspirational. That's the objective is what's the horizon? What is the future state? What is the capability we want at the end of 90 days or at the end of 180 days or at the end of one year that we wanna be able to say, we can now do something that we couldn't do before and that something should be meaningful, right? So your language matters. Can other people repeat it? It's the same as, as the TED Talks I coach. Can other people repeat the central idea? Can they internalize it in their own way? So language really, really matters. Um, and there are lots of examples um, uh, around that too. But remember that it's all purpose-driven work. The purpose of your division, the purpose of your initiative is not different than the purpose of your company. But you have to align it and you have to connect the dots. That's your responsibility. If, you're, if your company's not using OKRs, you still have this powerful tool to say, you know, the reason why... Uh, we need to become more eco-friendly so that, you know, we can achieve your goals of being the number one trusted brand among Gen Z, right? Um, go find out where the energy is in what's the core of your business and figure out how to express the purpose <laughs> aligned with that purpose. Success is a team sport. So OKRs can help you innovate your way out of, you know, your corporate silo um, and don't take being on the same page for granted. Get a sponsor on your leadership team, articulate your O's and how you'll measure progress. Like don't leave that for granted either. Are these the things that matter the most? Not everything you're gonna do, but if we hit these three benchmarks of success in this time period, can we agree that that's a priority, right? post it. It's a social contract, right? Mm -hmm. And you might be directionally correct and aligned with your executive leadership team, but you might be executionally incorrect. So those key results mm -hmm. are a way of kind of quality checking, probably in a language that people who are more aligned with the core um, are familiar with and making sure that you're not settling for business as usual. Track progress every chance you you get pivot as you learn. And um, 
we say, you know, the special sauce of objectives and key results measuring purpose, right, is it's like cookies and milk, they're better together. So don't have one or the other, the set and the relationship between the two is a key differentiator between the teams we see succeed and the teams we see succeed, but maybe they take longer and maybe they don't, um, they aren't as efficient. So uh, there's a ton more on the site. Check out whatmatters.com. Write us at hello at whatmatters.com. And, um, you know, we even have a free video course and we have Google's own playbook on, uh, on how they do OKRs and arguably they did pretty well. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate you sharing all of this with us. Thank you.